Hi guys. Oh, I'm just going to bar. I hope you can hear me as much as this is sharing properly. Please signify in the comment section if you can hear me, please. Alright, we're going to space bar. This is a community of um, designers, developers, and people in the tech industry. And we are having a conversation today with engineer Polarin. Okay, so first thing. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Can you reduce the volume of the background song? Of the music, Abby? Yeah, you have to reduce the volume. Okay, okay. Is it okay? Hello? Yes, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Hello? All right. All right, thank you guys for coming. Today, I really have been anticipating today. So, this is Space Bar, and we'll be having a um, recording conversations with um, tech people here. And today, we decided to have a conversation with an embedded systems engineer. All right, so these are a few things you need to note. In the comment section, you could ask questions that um, can drive this conversation forward and all. And um, if I see something that is noteworthy, I will bring it up to the speaker and then we can discuss that. So today is all about embedded systems and, and questions that surround that. So if you have any question or anything as the conversation goes on, we could um, expand on that. All right, so today we get engineer Larry. Now for Larry is an embedded system engineer and he has worked quite a lot of things, projects and all. And um, so just want to discuss and understand some things that have to do with real life industry and how to um, get started and how to work on real life projects, what it entails and all. Uh, can you please uh, introduce yourself? Are you there? Okay. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Good evening, guys. Well, my name is Michelab um, Kaji Kolari. I'm an embedded STEM engineer. Hello. Okay. And I have about. Hello, Five years experience. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Ken. Yeah, I'm following because you can't hear you. Uh, I don't know if every other person can hear him. We can't hear you. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Can't hear you. Hello. hello. Yes, I can hear you now, but I did not get hello. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, what did you say? Joshua. Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. You know? Continue. Okay, I can hear you now. Good. I think that's okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I'm done with the introduction. My name is um Ishola Kadri for line and I'm an embedded okay, STEM engineer. Yeah. yeah. I've got about five years experience in the field now. And I've worked on quite a number of projects in the field. So in today's discussion, we're talking about the difference between a prototype project and a real life project and the steps you need to take maybe when you are approached by a company to build a project the steps you need to take in doing that Joshua are you there hello
Hello. Hello. Ah, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. So the network has to be messed up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think it's back now. All right. So you're okay. saying. Now I'm done with the introduction. I want to know if I need to move into the main discussion. Okay. Yeah, you could. Okay. Hello. Joshua, are you there? Yeah, I'm here now. I'm here now. Okay. 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 Uh huh. The first step to take when you are okay. Let's do it this way. Let's separate it into two. The first section will be about uh, the steps for when you are approached by a company to make a specific okay. design for the company. So the first thing you are going to want to do would be to list out your specifications for the project and this is What's the up? part where you list hello yeah are you there okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, somebody uh somebody said somebody wants us to explain what embedded system is okay Okay, for those who are new to embedded systems generally, embedded systems are basically smaller systems. We embed in a bigger device to control the device. Like, uh, for example, let's say your microwave, for example. There's a small microcontroller inside your microwave that controls it, that tells you, okay, for the timer, that tells your microwave that, okay, after so so time, your user input, the AT element should be off. Same thing with your televisions and any other device you can think of. That's basically what embedded system entails. I don't know if that's clear enough for the person. Yeah, I think that's cool. If you have any other uh, expansion, you can also. Okay, let's just move on with the specifications. Okay, under the specifications, what else you do is you list out the function of your device. Let's say, for example, a company approach you and they ask you to build. A device that would um, maybe take the attendance, an attendance system, for example. So what you want to do in the specification is to design, okay, how many users are we going to be using? So let's say they have 100 employees and you're okay, you assume maybe in the next couple of years they will span now 150. So you plan your device to be able to accommodate 200 employees. Then you would ask them, power specification you list is, is it going to be powered by battery or will it be powered by electricity? If it's a company that have, uh, that they have in two, uh, 24 seven electricity, you can just make it directly from electricity. But if they don't, yeah, that's be powered by battery. Then you declare other things like the user input. Do you want the user to be able to input um, the new fingerprints for the employees, or do you want, or, or do you want to add code everything in, into it? Then you talk about your security too. Do you want the kind of security you want? And your device to have then talk about the okay yeah that's all for the i think for sort of extent that's all for the um specifications and the next stage what you want to do is to make your design and this design is not the same thing as a circuit diagram or anything this design is where you you pick a coin a component you are going to use or a device, the device you use to achieve each of your goal in your aims, like your specifications. Let's say, for example, now you want to be able to capture 100 users' fingerprints locally. So you are going to you are going to use a, a fingerprint sensor that can that can um, take up to 100 users. Then and that uh, and that's in the components is the microcontroller you use the design. You choose your microcontroller. And choosing the microcontroller means you know the speed you want, i.e., you know the process you want to perform. With the, you know the uh, the process the uh, project will perform. You know how fast you need it to be, so you choose your microcontroller for the specific uh, project. After doing that, the next stage will be for you to select each component. Let's say you you need a fingerprint sensor that can take hundred users. There are probably more than 100 fingerprint sensors that can do that. So this next is where you pick one that you use. And this place, you compare the costs, reliability, 
the um, materials available on it because sometimes we just get some component and the components the touch to be in chinese and you have to start translating so you check all these things which is the people costs the um, the actual cost money then the uh, the reliability of the machine and after this what you do next is to finally design your circuit diagram so after you have all your components after you have selected all the components you want to use after you have all the components you want to use the next thing is to design your circuit diagram then your circuit diagram should be once you have the data sheet of the um of all the components data sheet of the microcontroller will tell you the pins you need to use for your um the pins you need to use hello can anybody hear me if you are here Hello, Jishu, are you there? I'm here. I can hear you. If anybody is hearing me, let me know. I don't know if I should continue. Hello. Can anybody hear me? Hello. I can hear you, uh, all right, please continue. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So we were at, uh, okay, the circuit diagram. So the circuit diagram, okay, after you have gotten the data sheet of each of your components, the data sheet will guide you into choosing the correct pin for the correct, for each component. And after you are done with the circuit design, the next step will be to design your PCB. For those who are new to the field, PCB, the full meaning of PCB is a printed sec, um, circuit board. It's normally done with copper. So we design PCBs are, for example, let's say when you open your maybe old electronics, you see a board inside. What people normally call motherboard. That board is the PCB. So designing it will be the next stage. You design your PCB and then you put your component on it. Just basic after designing your PCB and soldering your component on it, then you test your device. And this testing is um is part is actually the biggest part of the project because after testing and sorry after designing your PC you have to write your code after designing your PC we just assume that's like a thing you have done after the PCB is layout sorry after writing your code but this testing is very very is the is actually, actually one of the most important part of this entire process you could test the project under different conditions. I have to stress test your project because there's something they call dummy test. Dummy test is whereby you test your device as if you know nothing about computer. So you need to make your device as simple as possible to use. So you'll be testing your device as, as if the person using the device does not know anything about computer. Then you test it for an extended period of time to see reliability. Then once you are done with the testing, this part is is like the most important part in the entire project, the packaging. Because as only an engineer will appreciate a project by the code or by the hardware you used, but every other person will only see the packaging. So your packaging has to be your number one priority. You have to make it look good. So you will decide whether I want to use maybe a 3D printed case or maybe it's a machine case, a CNC machine case, or, or, or even the mode. So that's basically the steps you need to take to when you are approached by a company to to make a device to for to make a particular device for them. I think I have some pictures I will explain it out some of a project like that I did on um, uh, a system that is checking the weight of patients. An hospital. I'll check that later in the later in the stream. Just mind it. Then the other part, the other section is hello. Yeah, I, I said okay, I'll remind you. All right, all right. So the next um part is for uh, people who are interested in starting their own startup. And now starting your own uh, starting your uh address startup is 
it's a very very difficult process but it's actually doable i will first of all start with the problems you might face because when you want to start a startup you have to tell yourself the problem you are trying to solve and the solution on the market because almost all problems have solution but my advice for you is this if you want to start a startup you need to look for maybe a problem specific to your area or to nigeria as a whole so that those, those kind of problems are specific and they are easier to solve for us because sometimes after doing your research and all you find out that there's something cheaper in the market already and it does not make sense for you to start a startup when you are offering nothing more for more for more cost so what you would do what you do is either you look for a way to beat the price of the existing product or market or you look for an additional feature your own device will carry so when you are doing your, your startup the first stage is research research is the most expensive phase of any startup any hardware startup and can take as long as can take as, as short as maybe six months and as long as three years depend on what you are doing research on and the finances you have on ground you still follow the, the process of specification design the component selection the circuit design pcb layout they have that pcb layout but pcb layout will be prototype i like pcb layout the testing will be for the prototype because when you are making research for your own startup you would definitely have more than one prototype so after the first prototype you will document the problems you do your alpha tests and your beta tests for those who are not familiar with alpha tech alpha test is when the engineers who actually built the stuff are testing by themselves that's alpha test that's when you in-house testing the beta test is when you give like people like not non-engineers more importantly non-engineers like um to test your device you have to do alpha test beta test take feedback redesign again put it under prototype do alpha test do beta test take feedback and design again this is this going until the project that you can deploy and that will be your version one then sometimes when doing this hardware this um hardware project you don't put all your idea in your first version because they have to be people like to pay a little more for a lot a lot more so when you have your first version to be maybe offline your second version could be internet enabled so you have to know a way to keep your version 1.0 2.0 3.0 2, so you have something to release every year just take a look at our mobile phones every year they keep adding something something a little more a little extra every year so that and that keeps us from buying new mobile phones every year and i'm telling you that this people have the idea of what they want the next one to be but they can't just do everything at, at once so you have to keep some things for your next version and i think that's basically it for um for starting your own um address startup audit and a lot more but that's basically the overview so if, if there's any questions so far Oh, oh yeah, uh, thanks for Larry. Okay. Thanks Larry for that. that. That's a lot to unpack. Uh, you, you mentioned about um, PCB layouts and some other stuff. I don't know if you can take it from the first one and then walk us through them. Because, uh, that's I can't hear you clearly. You said something about PCB or something. Yeah, I said I you mentioned question, all please. those steps. Okay. All those steps. Okay, the steps. So I'm okay, okay. Take each of them one by one and go into details and how they uh, fit into the whole project scope. Okay, the steps are specifications, the design, the component selection, the circuit diagram design, the PCB layout design, then testing, alpha tests and beta tests. Yes, then um, deploy. Is that the question? Yeah, I'll say, okay, could you like explain them? Which particular step am I supposed to explain? Oh, I'm again. Yeah, everything, like the old... Okay, I thought I did before. Then, like the prototyping. Okay, each step again, or just the prototype? Each of them in details, yeah. Okay, okay. The specifications, 
is basically you listing the aims, the aims and objective of your device. Like sometimes you know what you want to do, but if you don't put it in writing, you if you don't put it in writing, you might not you might forget or add something later on. So this listing the aims and objectives is very important. You have to list out each function you want your device to do. Let's take for instance a a microwave you want to design a microwave you your number one aim will be for it to be able to warm your food and that's to take um user inputs that's the time it needs to that's the time to warm the food it needs to be able to warm your food that means there will be an eating element the aim is to warm the food to take user inputs to display the time to to take this example to display the time and uh, to for the power I think that's all for the for a microwave if there's anything i'm missing you can remind me then the design yeah, i think we can, we can work with okay let's assume let's just use microwave as our case study the next step is the design and for the design this is where you okay you choose for the eating element you can choose to use a nichrome you can choose to use um what else there's another eating element i think i've forgotten the name you can choose to use that you can choose to use a nichrome cable then for the timer you can choose to use a mechanical timer or use your microcontroller to control that then for yeah, yeah you just you determine you time the power supply also for the power supply you can choose to use directly from the utilities the main sorry or a battery power supply then the components this is where you now the next step the third step is the component selection this is where you determine the actual components you use so let's say for example the eating, the eating element you want to use now is necro is necro that will be our eating element then the my controller will use is let's say stm32 that will be my controller then um the display would we'll use will be maybe a nixion display or any other tf let's say a nixion display now this is all selecting the components we we'll use the next step will be the circuit diagram the circuit diagram design any other design is for us to determine how we control connect Okay, somebody's asking the question on choosing the right my controller. So choosing the right my controller, you have to okay. Let's say for example, we are we are building a microwave. What, what we want to do is to take user inputs one to um measure to take user input that's the time to count the time that's there will be a timer. Then eat the food. The eating will be done with the relay. So any microcontroller can do that. The operations are not quite complex. So that so that way we can decide to use any 8-bit microcontroller to save costs. So choosing the microcontroller, there are there are three factors you have to consider. Number one is cost, the cost of the microcontroller. You have to check if the microcontroller is um, cheap, which one is cheap. Then number two is the, um, let's say, familiarity to the microcontroller. Because personally now, you see some engineers who are familiar with PIC family. Some other engineers are familiar with the Atmel family, some STM family. So you choose from the family you are familiar with. So after getting the microcontroller, if uh, my controller family you are familiar with the third step will be to look at the functions you actually need for example now let's say an at mega 3 to 8p that's an internal uh, clock speed of 8 megahertz if 8 megahertz is enough there's if there's an actual formula of calculating the speed you need for a project but something like a micro is a basic stop 8 megahertz is enough if 8 megahertz is enough you can just choose an at mega 3 to 8p if you need more you can use an external clock so let's use an external clock or go for an IR microcontroller. Then you check the pins you require. Let's say you need uh, 
you need 10 pins for your projects 10 digital pins for your projects and as we got 3 to 8 pairs 13 digital pins and six analog pins and six analog pins so that should be able to cover it but let's say for instance we need 20 analog pins our option will be to go for another microcontroller or to get a multiplexer a multiplexer will generally make your project slower so you have to go for another microcontroller so that's i hope that's clear for the microcontroller using the right microcontroller Josh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, is that clear for the microcontroller? Is there anything to? I think so. I think so. If if he has any other question, you could pop it up. All right, all right. Now, so you were the third. Is... Yeah, third. I think we are the second diagram now. Okay, second diagram design. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To design the circuit diagram, this is basically you just checking the data sheet of your controller and data sheet of your component to see what pins you need to con connect them to to make it work. Let's say you check, let's say you want to use a relay now. A relay just needs a digital pin. So just look for a digital pin to connect it. So you can it can be any of digital pins. That would definitely be your choice. Let's say you want to connect a maybe a sensor to read the temperature. That was an analog sensor. So all you need to do is just to look for an analog pin to connect it to it. Some devices are I2C, some are SPI. Those are things we get into later. All we are doing is an actual microcontroller course itself. So, um, uh, just so when you, when you need an I2C, when you have an I2C device, you connect it to the I2C port of the microcontroller. Some has some microcontroller have one I2C port, some have multiple. Depend, that's, depend, that's another factor to choose your microcontroller. I think that's it for the circuit design. The PCB design is basically the same thing as circuit design, but PCB design is what you see physically. And it's quite different. Maybe, my, and I talk, you see about the PCB design course, maybe. So PCB design is basically circuit design but what you see physically like when you open any electronics and you see the board where, where people call motherboard that's basically what, that's basically what we call pcb design then the testing testing you have to test for each of the aims you listed earlier let's say for instance your one of the aim is to display the data when you are testing for it when you put your system you check if all data are being displayed correctly and the displays are the display is not uh, is not going to is not going to fade or anything. You test the display. Let's say under um, aim is to warm the food. You put your food there and warm it and see if it can warm it. Then we are stress testing. Let's say you have to test. Let's say you be the device to maybe warm food for maximum of 20 minutes. When you stress test, you stress test to warm food for maybe 30 minutes to see how the device will hold up after warming for 30 minutes. That's for the alpha test. Then for the beta test, you just give a user and tell the user. This is what this device is doing then you let them use it on their own because and, and beta test is all about you giving a non-engineer your device to test it for you so you'll be able to know how easy to use your device is and how reliable how reliable your device is i think that's that's all the steps uh, all right there's a question for you okay uh, let me pop it up okay for a beginner really um, there are a lot of things in the middle system, but I, would, I would advise you to start with things like um, things like um, arduino you just check on arduino you can check for courses on youtube on arduino arduino will introduce you to the basics of my controller how to maybe how to use digital how to read a digital device how to control a simple digital device analog device and so on starting with arduino is a good step but you have to keep in mind that what you are starting with arduino but you're not going to end with arduino because arduino is an id and the, they have a development board but when you're going to be coding later in the industry you're going to have to write game meta codes game meta codes are codes that you write Without libraries, 
but I'm not going to start with that since you're just a starter. I'm not going to advise you to start with Arduino and uh, ESP32 and the likes. You can see a lot of resources on it on YouTube. Hello. Yeah, uh, that, that's interesting. So I've never heard of payment myself. Is there anything you could add more to that? Oh. Okay. Well, in the industry, when, when you're working for a company, if you intend to work for a company, an MSM company, most of the company will not use it. I know most of you will be used to most of you will be used to um uh most of you will be used to things like uh, um writing just going to YouTube using a couple of libraries and achieving your aim. Let me give you an example. The entire Arduino itself, Arduino ID itself, is a library. So what they do is all, all the things you see, like things like digital. Uh, digital rights so maybe turn on an led digital right eye so maybe turn up an led yeah. is hello i see that hello Hello, Joshua, are you there? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, hey. so let's say, for example, now you are building a device that, let's say, a medical device, whereby in any medical device, timing is very, very important. For example, now, there's a test conductor, then I do know digital write function. When you see a digital write pin 4i, then another one, and that pin, maybe data right pin 4i, then the next line, data right pin 5i. You notice that there's a delay of, um, before the two pins won, there will be a delay of about, I think, when it was measured, it was around 1.2 nanoseconds delay. That means the function data right takes 1.2 nanoseconds to execute. Normally, for a normal, for the blind, uh, our eyes, we cannot notice it. But when you're talking about a device, like a medical device, whereby timing is very, very important, you don't have to write the code by yourself. That means you don't write using uh, the Arduino ID. If you're writing in DMA, you're writing in C, micro, uh, micro C or assembly language. So that the entire data write function, you address the register itself. I don't know if, if you have done, if you know anything about registers. Registers are like blocks in the microcontrollers, whereby when you assign the value to them, the old the value, a single bit of value. So when you want to address an entire register block, you address it with um, a binary code. Maybe you want, want to set a particular register block to work with different things. So when you are writing the meta code, you address register directly and you don't use library. No matter what you are going to program, in the fact, in the industry, they don't use library, it's BM meta. Is that clear on BM meta program? Okay, uh, you want advanced resources. Uh, uh, there's this course on um, on BM Meta program with STM32 because STM32 is a, personally, I, I like STM32 as a microcontroller because STM32 microcontrollers are the most widely used in the industry. But if you want to check, just check any random device in your house and check the board there and try to read what's on the microcontroller there. You see STM32 there. I think there's a course on STM32 and BM Meta programming, I can refer you to. But I'll check the link before the end of this course. Before the end of this yeah, stream, I'll cool give stuff. it to Joshua. Sorry? Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll yeah. Be cool. Yeah, there is, although the course on Udemy, but I think there's a site for the free version also. Yeah, okay. so, but if you can buy the course on Udemy, that's, that's also fine. All right. <laughs> And now you prefer to buy it, it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I'm just telling people that have come that this is um stage bar and we are having a conversation with an embedded system engineer. So if you have any questions that are about embedded system, you don't stop it to start. Uh <laughs> I think people are loving the idea of the three bar That's cool. So 
Uh, of what? Sorry. You want to add to that? Eh? Okay. Free the. Sorry. I said, is there anything you want to add more as regards the step step to get to start here with a very yeah? here? Mm, no, I don't think anything is there for now because I, I think the guys here have already started. You just need something advanced. You're talking about showing some pictures there, that guy. Oh, God. Let me check if they are available. Give me a minute. Hello? Yeah, hello. Can, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hello, Joshua. Hello? Hello. Hello, Joshua is there. Hello, Joshua. Okay, are you back now? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay now. Uh, yeah. is, do you want to show those pictures now? No, I can't find the one for the hospital. I can't find the pictures again, but if I can send it to you personally, I don't know if I don't have people on the stream. Would like to see it, but I can't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not. It's on my phone now. And I'm on my system. I don't want to start connecting and sending now. So perhaps later. Oh, okay. Or if there's going to be any future calls. Uh -huh. By the way, this reminds me, I'm going to be having a um, a free course on the um, basics of drone designing, autonomous drone designing. So in this course, what we're going to be learning is how to build an autonomous drone, be it fixed wing, quadcopter, octacopter, octocopter, sorry. So there's going to be like, I think around three classes, it's going to be online on drone design and we'll get across to you on when the class will be so I'll, let me know if you guys are interested in that hello is anybody there Hello. Hello. I think um Joshua's um network is, is down. Okay. And somebody's interested. All right. Um I will get back to you on the date of the program but it's going to be sometimes next month for the first class on the on the drone design it's going to be a practical class and i think after the three classes the three free classes we're going to have we're going to have um, a practical class but that one is too much later but for the free classes that we have we'll get back to you on the date and you can inform others too also okay quite a lot of people are interested Okay. All right. So you, you send the details to me, or how how will how's that going to happen? No, no. I'll get I'll get the info to you, and you can get it to them. Yeah, March. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be in March. Okay. 
the first class will be in March. Right. I realize that most people on this chat are final year students or part of the level. Is there any advice you give okay. them as you get selection of projects and education of that? Okay, your project selection will be will be a good place for you to start, like to practicalize these steps I've given you about research. But depends on what you want to achieve with your project. For example, during my time, I selected I wanted the project that is um, that that can be implemented because some people just do things like let's say an automatic parking lot. You know what are going to be the prototype and it's not going to be useful. So what you need to <laughs> there's there's always time to learn because some people who don't, <laughs> this person that said she has a lot to learn there's always time to learn I, I I'm hoping that person is still a student even if you are not a student there's always time all these things you can learn it under a year or two years then after learning it the good thing about tech jobs is you keep learning on the job because there are some things that you just see on the job that you just learn it and that's the way it is in tech jobs. So about the final year project, you can pick a project that if I if I if I somebody that actually wants to do research, just pick something unique but not something complex. For those in you can because if you pick something complex, you might end up giving yourself problems. But problem is good, sure. Yeah? But since it's grade related, people might not want to do something that will, that will take years of research. Just pick something unique. Look for a problem. A particular problem maybe say for example now as you are at home let's say when the okay for example me i made an automatic changeover because personally now when you're at home now they take july you have to go on the gen change change over to generator so what i did was i built a, an automatic changeover that will automatically change uh, automatically on your gen then change over from P, mains to generator or to inverter because when i check the market they, we already have automatic changeovers but we don't have any for three sources so what i did is i built a changeover for three sources the change from mains to generator to inverter and to measure your inverter battery level your petrol the petrol in your gen so you check whether you have petrol in your gen before only your gen you check the battery level of your inverter so just something as easy as that you can choose to maybe say okay maybe the electricity, the electricity bill in your house now is too much i want to reduce it how do you use it? For example, a normal freezer does not need to be 24 hours a day. So maybe you build a timer switch to turn on and off the refrigerator at a particular time to save electricity. So just look for something easy, but a particular a problem that is particular to you or maybe your surrounding to solve. So is there any other question before we end the chat? The stream, sorry. For now, no. Thank you for that. All right then. So about the. So if you have any other question, you can post it in the comment section. The drone um, course would I'll get across to you through um, Joshua, and then if there is going to be any other course. But since you said they are family level students, I think it should be another if you can do. okay the written format i don't have i'll check for it but i think i should have something on it like a slide on it if i get it i'll send it through um joshua then i was talking about since Joshua says most of you guys are finished then now maybe you should do a course on um, pcb design on a project is there another would anybody be interested in that Anybody there? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, okay. I said you said uh, for the guy I asked for the uh, material, we can. I'll check for it and I'll send it to you. Then uh, you said most people are final okay. students, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think on our ne if I want to have the next stream, we should do something on PCB designing and how to yeah, actually no. make those those PCB at home. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think we can plan something. What, what, okay, before you guys resume, I will plan a, maybe a, a short class for you guys to actually learn how to design your PCB 
at home and make your PCB. Would, that, would anybody be interested in that? I bet they will. Because I am. All right, all right. Then we'll talk about the class later. I think that's all for this stream. There's no, no. If there's no other question. Um, sorry for. Uh, I can. Thank you for everything that you shared, and I hope to come back to you on the program. Right, so yeah, this is Ivan again, and we hope to have more conversations. Right, thank you for that. Right. I'm sorry about the old network. That was really terrible. That was the next one. That is a uh, um, conversation. All right, Solani, thank you. Is there anything you want to add before we? No, no, I'm fine. All right, thank you guys. All right, uh, bye. Okay, bye bye.